What's up, football fans? I'm Emery Hunt, the czar of the playbook. And don't forget to check out and grab your copy of our two latest book releases, Football, a Love Story, and What Did Football Teach Me? Visit our website at footballgameplan.com slash books and get your copies today. Kicking off our FBS wraparound is Arizona State and Texas A&M, and I'm excited to see what quarterback Mike Bercovici will do as the full-time starter. Their interior offensive line looks solid, and they still have the dynamic DJ Foster in the fold. Despite losing some key defenders, the Sun Devils are very talented on that side of the ball, and I would keep an eye on the second level as they'll be put to the test coverage-wise versus A&M. Now, for the Aggies in this ballgame, all eyes will be on that A&M defense as they bring in defensive guru John Chavis from LSU. And Chavis has some excellent pieces to work with as they move to a 4-3 defense. You look at defensive end Miles Garrett, who's one of the best pass rushers in the SEC. Offensively, quarterback Kyle Allen gets to start, and they get a healthy Ricky Seals-Jones back to go along with the speedy oil. Both teams have some questions about the ground game, so look for this to one to start out slowly but end up in a high scoring affair i like arizona state i think the biggest matchup will be between their secondary and the aggies receivers and i think that's one matchup they'll win en route to knocking off a m Taysom hill and his byu cougars will travel to lincoln and take on nebraska and byu has a major hole at running back with jamal williams going off the roster but the good part is that Taysom hill's ability to run with the ball will make it a lot easier for whomever steps up in that role now the Cougars still have wide receiver Mitch Matthews and should be solid along the offensive line. Now obviously the biggest question is whether or not they got better defensively but we'll have to wait and see. New Nebraska head coach Mike Riley inherits a talented ball club and I think what you'll see early on is a lot of tempo setting from their offense. Look for Nebraska to use their offensive line to wear down opponents which should ultimately allow quarterback Tommy Armstrong the ability to operate off play action. Defensively, you want to see the Cornhuskers get significantly better at stopping the run. That's going to be a key focal point versus BYU. I like Nebraska in this ballgame. Look for the Huskers to have a good showing in the run defense department and force Taysom Hill to consistently make plays from the pocket. Georgia Southern and West Virginia link up in what should be an entertaining game. Head coach Willie Fritz and his spread option attack caused fits for everyone they faced last year in their first season as an FBS member. Quarterback Kevin Ellison and running back Matt Breida returns, and they helped make Georgia Southern one of the top rushing teams in the country last season. The questions are along the offensive line and in the secondary, and hopefully the front end can help out the back end because their defensive line is very solid. For West Virginia in this ballgame, I look at two areas, their running game and their defensive discipline. I think they have the guy in the backfield that can definitely get it done in Russell Shell, and they are loaded with athletes at the second and third level in their 3-3-5 defense. Linebacker Nick Kowatowski and safety Carl Joseph, I think, will play huge roles in this one. I'm taking the Mountaineers in this ball game. Despite losing Kevin White and Clint Trickett at quarterback, I believe the Mountaineers are stacked and will surprise in the Big 12 this year. Good Big Ten Pac-12 matchup here as Jim Harbaugh makes his Michigan debut versus Utah. And Michigan's goal is to make their passing game an asset and not a liability this season. I think they can accomplish that with quarterback Jake Ruddock, who transfers from Iowa, and their ability to run the football with Derek Green and Ty Isaac. The passing game doesn't have to be explosive. It just has to be efficient. Defensively, the focus should be on the front seven because dealing with the Utah Utes, you're going to have to stop talented running back Devontae Booker, quarterback Travis Wilson, and a veteran offensive line. Now, Utah's goal will be to become balanced in their offensive attack, and defensively, they lose two studs an outside linebacker Nate Orchard and cornerback Eric Rowe. Now, I'm a big fan of defensive end Hunter Demick and also linebacker Jared Norris. It should be a fun game like it was last year in Ann Arbor, and I also see the same end result, a Utah victory. I like the Utes. Another good week one matchup between Texas and Notre Dame and the Longhorns hope junior quarterback Tyrone Swopes can thrive in a new offensive attack. Texas is going to a version of the spread to take advantage of his running ability. But I do think the guys that will benefit the most are tailbacks Jonathan Gray and Duke Catalan. It'll also help neutralize some of the questions that Texas has up front. On the defensive side, there's some talent, but there's also some questions, especially with the back seven. True freshman linebacker Malik Jefferson gets the start and hopefully can make an impact versus what looks like to be a very potent Notre Dame offense. The Irish are returning 17 starters along with quarterback Malik Zaire, who is the star of the Music City Bowl. With the talent around Zaire, it should help make his transition into the full-time starting role a lot easier. Linebacker Jalen Smith is arguably the best backer in the country, and he's one of 10 returning starters on that side, along with the return of cornerback Kavari Russell. Now, Texas will be a game opponent, but I think they ultimately will succumb to the depth and talent of Notre Dame. I like the Irish. 
kickoff classic between Wisconsin and Alabama, and both teams are replacing a bevy of offensive talent. And quite honestly, they're in the same boat in the sense that they'll both rely on their defense early on to help them navigate through September. You'll get treated to some excellent running back play in this game with Wisconsin's Corey Clement and Bama's Derrick Henry. Overall, the difference will come down to quarterback play, and we still don't know who will be the starter for Alabama, and Joel Staub has been average at best. I do know that Alabama's defensive front seven is tremendous, especially down the battery with nose tackle Ashawn Robinson and inside linebackers Reggie Ragland and Reuben Foster. I see a low-scoring affair with Bama having just enough to knock off the Badgers. Ohio State travels to Blacksburg to take on Virginia Tech, and this is a rematch of last year's Week 2 victory by Virginia Tech. And in this meeting, the Buckeyes are the reigning national champions and come with much more experience along the offensive line and at quarterback. Whether it's JT Barrett or Cordell Jones, they have the luxury of playing behind a good offensive line and with tailback Isakel Elliott, who's a Heisman frontrunner in the backfield. Defensively, Joey Bosa is the best defensive end in the land, but they did lose some key contributors at every level. Now, Virginia Tech lost a key contributor last year in defensive tackle Luther Mady, but they get him back, which should make Virginia Tech's defense tough once again. The hope is that quarterback Michael Brewer can curtail the mistakes and begin to help this offense really take flight. Wide receiver Isaiah Ford and Ohio State's cornerback Eli Apple should be a fun matchup to watch. Now, Virginia Tech, I believe, still poses a threat to Ohio State on both sides of the ball. I think the difference will be the play of both quarterbacks for the Buckeyes. I like Ohio State to get revenge over the Hokies in a close one.